everybody, it's Felisa, and today is um, story time. Yeah, so this this story time actually, like, when I look back over my story times, I've only told a, a handful of them, and I'm like, girl, you really need to get your life. Like, your life is just, like, full of, <laughs> it seems like it's just full of tragedy. It's not. It's really not. I just have crazy things that happen to me. Um... And I don't know why, but I'm grateful that I'm still here to talk about it and to tell the tale. And I think that today's story time will be exceedingly short. Maybe not. I said it all the time. Anyway, um, but I'm hoping that at the end, much like um, my story time for December, <laughs> um, that you have a different perspective and a different awareness. So um, I was... I just, I bought a new car in January. Um, I wasn't trying to buy a new car. Um, I was just sick of putting my, uh, money in my old one. Um, I literally had planned to, to drive that until the wheels fell off. And yeah, I, yeah, it was, uh, there came another repair and I was like, I'm not putting another single solitary dime into this vehicle. I'm about to get another one. So I did. And it was a, uh, a vehicle that I wanted for a long time. I love this truck. Um, a few years ago, I downsized to um, a sedan and it was okay, but I had, I, it, it, first of all, the particular vehicle that I got was just full of problems and it, it was always something, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. And um, it just, I live in a state where it is winter. Um, eight months out of the year and you know this was uh, a year the year after I bought this car um, we had like snowmageddon like we were literally waking up and it was dang near April and it was still snow up to my kneecaps and doing just doing a full so I was like oh my god when next time I get a vehicle I want to get a truck and so I got back in my SUV I was so excited driving around thinking that I'm the stuff like yeah Back in my truck. I'm back on my truck stuff. Anyway, so I was on my way to go pick up my, my youngest daughter. She had a doctor's appointment this particular day. I left work, and I'm just taking one of our local freeways. And in front of me, there was a pickup truck. And um, the, the pickup truck and I were kind of like in tandem almost so we're like driving along this truck is getting off on the same exit that I'm getting off of I'm still you know safe enough behind him I'm not tailgating I'm not doing anything so I see you know kind of like in the streets so I always do like the scan thing like I'm always looking to see because where I live there's a lot of deer and foolishness and I ain't trying to be you know on the news because Bambi then crashed in my window and attacked me in the face so you know I'm always doing like the scan thing and I see that there's something like rolling around in the street. I can't make a, make out what it is at this point. And I don't even think that I paid that much attention, attention to it other than to note that it was like rolling around the street. So the truck rolls over it, comes underneath the back tire, spins out, and comes flying at the, at the car. When I tell you, I literally, I understand now what people mean that I mean, what people mean when they say that time stood still, like it, I thought in my head that it took forever and I'm literally watching this projectile come towards the car, did not swerve, didn't even, I don't even think that I blinked that it even registered that this thing was headed towards the windshield. Next thing you know, it hits, poof, the whole windshield shatters. The whole windshield shatters. So now it's all on the... It didn't come through. There's like a portion of the top where the um, the rearview mirror is. So imagine the rearview mirror is here. And there's like a, um, a, a tear where the, the glass meets the actual vehicle. And it's, <laughs> it's falling in this way. And I hear air. And like the, the, yeah, so I'm looking and I'm still trying to get off the freeway. I slow down. I'm covered in glass. There's glass in my hair, glass on my lap, glass in the drive, in the passenger seat, all on the dash. I'm like, and I'm still stunned. Like, I still am trying to process exactly what happened. So I get off. I call my daughter. 
And she's like, mommy, I'm going to be late. You know, blah, blah, blah. We're supposed to be at the doctor, yada, yada. I said, and I very calmly said, come out to the, come out to the car and you'll see why I was late. And so she says, okay. I stopped though before I actually pulled up to the house because I was just so shaken. And I remember pulling out my phone and I recorded a video. And I said on this video that I see why people record in the moment. And I mean, I gave every shout out there was possible to give a shout out for to God because I could have been dead. And I know that there are a lot of people who think that that's an exaggeration, but when I tell you that this thing came flying in my windshield and, you know, we've had situations, as I'm sure, across the country where um, people have thought it was funny and have thrown things off of freeway overpasses and have hit vehicles and whatever it is that they're throwing have gone crashing through the windshield itself and struck a, a, a driver or struck a passenger and ha killed them. And so, you know, you, the idea that this is a projectile that's coming towards your vehicle and the only thing that stopped this impact was the windshield. So I thought, so... Um, she gets in the car. She's like, oh, my God, mama. I'm crying like crocodile tears. You know, I'm thanking God. I'm thanking the ancestors. I'm giving daps up to my angels like y'all the real MVP. Thank you so much because at that moment, I was aware of a couple of things. Number one, um, that journey, which was routine for me to go and pick her up, you know, and, and, and take her to where she needs to go. I'm a mom. That's what I do. Could have ended much differently than what I thought. Um, that thing could have killed me. I still didn't figure out what it was, but that what it, we're going to call it a pipe because I thought that that's what it was. That pipe could have killed me because it could have gone easily through that windshield and struck me in the face or head. If it didn't kill me, it could have definitely incapacitated me. I could be um, a traumatic brain injury patient right now. I could be fighting through rehab and, you know, OTPT services. I could be struggling to learn how to walk, how to talk. I could be suffering from neurological damage that is so extensive and catastrophic that I'm a vegetable. I could be on life support. My children, instead of deciding Instead of deciding what, you know, what we were going to do for dinner, may have had to have a conversation about what do we do about mom and how do we care for her and what type of insurance does she have and what kind of money do we have saved? Those could have been the conversations that my children could have had. And then I was struck by the fact that my daughter was literally probably five minutes away from me at that point before I, I pulled off of the freeway and was able to call her. She would have just been calling and calling and calling with no answer, would have no idea where I was. And I, I would have been on that freeway with God knows who, first responders, the morgue, picking me up, trying to figure out who to call in my phone, who should they reach out to to let them know that this person is on the freeway. And, you know, before you say that those are morbid thoughts, those are very real thoughts. Very, very real. It, I could have had a different outcome. And when I tell you I'm so incredible, and I like, I'm, I'm struggling not to cry because I'm so incredibly grateful that 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 wasn't my end, that I'm, I'm able to still be here and be a general nuisance to people and put love and to be loved. So anyway, I pick her up. She, she comes in with every amount of chill that there is because she recognizes that this could have been very bad and could have gone left very easily. So instead of me calling the tow truck, my cheap self decides I'm going to, you know, just <laughs> go to the dealership. So I get to the dealership, you know, they send me over to Collision, get to Collision. Collision's like, oh, we don't, do, we don't just do glass. So then I had to drive around the corner to the glass shop. So I get there, very, very nice guy, um, 
who, you know, took care of me and made sure that, you know, I had all my paperwork and stuff for my insurance and all that kind of thing. Anyway, so I left. I went to go pick up my, my rental car. You know, my daughter and I were on our happy way home. Then I thought, I didn't get any paperwork. Let me swing back around to, to go and get the paperwork. So I get back to the, the, the glass shop. And I'm like, you know, hey, I didn't get any paperwork. He was like, he said, no, you don't need it. Well, he had emailed it to me. So, you know, I think that he didn't realize that I didn't know that he did, that he emailed it anyway. So he said, no, but I'm glad that you came back because I want to show you something. So he takes me back in the, um, in the work area in the bay. And so he said, when we first looked at the vehicle, we didn't notice this. And it wasn't until... The tech took all of the shattered glass out. By this time, they had gotten the glass out. Never, but child, they were fast. They had gotten the glass out, and so they were prepping it to put the new glass in. And so he showed me. He's like, "Look at this." So on my hood of my vehicle, there was a, for lack of a better term, like a skid mark. What this thing had done was, I thought when I was looking at it that it just flew directly to the to the car. It didn't. What actually, and I heard an impact, but I thought that it that the impact that I heard was when it struck the window. It wasn't. What I heard was this thing hitting my hood of my car. And because the hood of my car is kind of sloped, it actually hit and was like a projectile, like it like a launch pad up the, the hood. And to the top of the windshield where it automatically, where it, um, it hit and um, shattered the glass. So when I saw that, I thought, my God. Because if it hadn't hit and if it hadn't taken this deviated path, it literally would have come straight for my face. And again, like I said, it would have been a different outcome. So when I say that I believe with all my heart that God was looking out for me, I believe with all my heart that my angels were protecting me. I believe with every, every fiber of my being that this was a, a, a protection that I can't even articulate and I'm not any deserving than the next person, but I'm so incredibly grateful. I really, really am. I'm so incredibly grateful. And it shaped the way that I've been looking at life, the way that I've been, you know, thinking about my days and, you know, how I orient myself to whatever's going on. It just don't seem like it's that serious anymore. You would think that after I almost went blind in December, <laughs> that it wouldn't be that serious. But it was kind of different this time because this was kind of like things that were outside of my control. I really wasn't doing anything. I was on my way to go pick up my daughter. And I'm like, you know, this is this is a crazy thing that happens to people across our nation every day. And they don't live to tell the tale. So I'm so incredibly grateful that I'm still here and I was able to share. And I'm able to tell you guys this so you know if nothing else be grateful for every single day be grateful for every moment because it's not owed to you and you don't deserve that and you don't none of that tell people that you love them tell people that you care if you have a grudge with someone get that right sometimes people don't even notice you mad at them you just mad for no reason like open your mouth and say something but you know at the end of the day like it's so important to be you know, like even killed and like this thing that we call life and all of the stress and all of the extra stuff that we put on top of it, this is not worth it in the end. It's just, we carry far too much stuff and we fail to see what the meaning is of life, which is just be there and be present and be grateful for every day that you give because it get because it truly is a gift. Anyway, that's my story time. Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and I will catch y'all later on. Bye.